John Wayne playing Macbeth. Is this a dagger I see before me? He does. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Reactions, you idiots. I'm Corbin. I am not John Wayne. Uh, thank God. Uh, but... Please follow us on Instagram, Instagram and Twitter for more juicy content. And... I think we're supposed to take from We do appreciate the support. If we were athletes, you would be athletic supporters. <laughs> and, uh... Please follow us on official Twitter account. And today... We finally did it. It's only taken forever. We watched... McBool. Dun! 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 McBool! McBool! Not to be confused with... I don't know. I, I got nothing. No. Nope. <laughs> But uh, it's a Vishal Bardwash film. Who's that? Uh, Have we ever seen one of his films? He's he's this no-name director. He's done one or two films in his life. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Sarcasm. Um, but uh, not to be confused with Sar Tosh. Thank so you. So we watched Painter. Obviously loved it. Yep. Uh, and uh, so then we found out that he did a whole series of these, and the first one yep. was. This. McBool. McBool. In 2003. And Which, you want to read the synopsis? Yes. It is the intri- Let's do this the proper way, shall we? The intrigue of the Shakespearean tragedy Macbeth is transposed to the Mumbai underworld. Directed by legit. the incomparable Vishal Bardwaj. Who also did the score? Who did the score. Yep. Um, and... Did he write it too? Yeah, he has part of the screenplay yeah, with one of I think the that's writers. one of his um, writing partners. I believe he's done quite a few things. Abbas. Like yeah. Uh, and then starring a ton of people. Yes. <laughs> Irfan Khan, Tabu, uh, Nasserdin uh, Shah, Shah. Uh, and I believe... Om Puri. Yeah, Om Puri. Yep. Uh, yes, that's who. And a couple of other people in there that we know and we've seen in a lot of other stuff that uh, we just don't know their names, but we've seen them. Yes. Uh, uh, but this is obviously, obviously a <laughs> an adaptation <laughs> of, of uh, Macbeth, of course. Yes. Uh, the Shakespearean. You were, have you played in Macbeth? I have or? not. I would love to. This is our third film of the Shawls. Is it? Yes. Yeah, so we are third? I know. Well, we took, we took to a little space because we watched, you know, Heather, and then we watched Seven Coon Moff, and then we did a bunch of trailer reactions. But I wanted to space them out, wow. kind of like to Shars. Because That's wild. I want to, uh, you know, soak in the juiciness. But I don't know what you thought about because we haven't thought, uh, talked we about haven't it. We haven't talked about it. Holy cow. I loved it. <laughs> like, it was genius. What a, what from, a shocker. From the first frame. I don't know if you remember the first frame. But it was Nasserad and Shah. The, and the window. And drawing it. What the, one, the shot was just brilliant. Uh -huh. But also seeing Nasserad and Shah in this completely different role that I have yet to see him in. Yep. Because we've seen him in the Deborah film and... Oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. And then we've seen a bunch of trailers, of course. Right. But um, God, it, the, the first opening shot just kind of just gripped me immediately. <laughs> you immediately know you're watching art. Yes. Yeah. And like, oh, man, I could, <laughs> I could go on and on because the watching a Vishal Bardwash film is similar but very different uh, to watching a uh, Quentin Tarantino film. Mm -hmm. That's who I equate him most. That's he's it's very different, so he's not the exact same. Very, very, very but different. But it's the most I can equate him to here in America of right. a director. Right. Because it's so unique, but the director is so brilliant and so different in how he approaches things. And the other thing you get from him is what you get from Quentin is I'm telling my film the way I want to tell my film, and all that matters to me is me telling it the way I want to tell it. Mm -hmm. I all I know is I have a vision and I want to communicate that vision and Yes, I would like it to be a box office success, but I, that's not what I'm interested in. He's interested in making art. I, I, the studios might like it, they might not like it, the audience may like it. They, I, I have to tell the story, and this is how I want to tell it. Yeah. Period. Yeah, and I love that about and it. And I can tell you multiple things in this. The best performance I've seen from, I think, almost all the actors in this. Yeah, we have a lot to talk about. Um, Let's, we're going to probably be here for three, four hours. To start with, uh, we're going to go back to uh, Vishal because we'll talk about him in multiple aspects because he's part of all of it. Yeah, all, all of it. it. But this is the best performance I've seen Irfan Khan give. Okay, let's, let's, can we talk about, what did I say? I don't have my phone. And, and this has been actually regarded as, a lot of people say, like, um, some people might not agree, but I've heard a lot that this is like Vishal's best film. 
Um, this is that's an interesting and uh, I'd love to talk about that. Um, and I think a lot of it had because the only we could talk about this for a second. The only flaw I could actually find in this film, and mm -hmm. it's not even a flaw. It's the same flaw that Godfather has. It's trapped and it's it's confined by its time. Uh huh. And so like the the quality of the like the the video. Oh okay. Same thing with the Godfather. It's not really a flaw. Right. But like if like he made it now like with Hater and you see he has these right HD 4K cameras right and, and all that kind of stuff so he could get better shots. That's the only thing and it's like I said it's not even a flaw because. The, like the, the Godfather was made the exact same way, so and there's that's not really a flaw to the Godfather. It's just that that's what the oh, Godfather right. is. Rick, <laughs> what did I do? Um, and so, like, I don't know if you feel the same way, but that's the only. And like I said, it's not really a flaw. It's that he was trapped by the time it was 2003. Yeah. So they didn't have all the equipment that he would need to have, like the the 4K shots. Yeah. And stuff like that. There's another thing that I find to be a beautiful flaw. Mm. Um. His okay, so let's let's talk about this, and then we're gonna get back into the actors here. But let's talk about his his cinematography and editing and what you're talking about. Um, and I agree with you, and I don't even see that so much as a flaw. Yeah, here's, that's what I said. It's not a flaw. It's, yeah, that's the only thing I could find, though. Right. The here's the other thing that to me is a quote unquote flaw. It's a dirty film, and here's let me elaborate. It's dirty. Remember we've described he's the Beethoven, mm -hmm. and Sanjay's the Mozart. The visual aesthetic of a Sanjay film is flawless. Mm -hmm. Vishal doesn't care about it being flawless, like mm -hmm. Beethoven. Like if you look at the original manuscripts of those people's work, Mozart doesn't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's one of the most extraordinary things about his works is that you look at it and there's like no changes and no mistakes. It just comes out of him perfect. Mm -hmm. Beethoven is fighting all the time to find the perfection. He's fighting all the time to find the perfection and it's beautifully dirty. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't... He oh, doesn't I love care. That about it. I yeah. love that about it. He doesn't care. He takes his time for some shots, but there's some times where I see he does some shots and some edits that aren't really clean yeah. and aren't really aesthetically pretty. And I feel like he just doesn't care because it's like I want it to, I just want it to transition like that. Mm -hmm. That's how I want it to be right there. I don't care if you think it's aesthetically nice. I want that to be a, an ugly shot. Mm -hmm. And I might not even have a message with that shot. I'm mm -hmm. just like, that's gonna be an ugly shot. A really beautiful shot that they didn't intend that I love and glad they kept was when Irfan is standing outside the hospital room door with his face on the glass. Oh, yeah. And he pulls back and the sweat is dripping down the glass. Uh, so, yeah, like it's purpose. It is from an editorial standpoint, it's not really clean, but I dig it. Well, I feel like that's how we intended dig it. it. Yeah. He very much intended it for it to be, though, because it was supposed to be gritty. Yep. Uh, and, which I, I love the stylistic choice. Especially since, um, you know, he didn't have the 4K cameras back then. So that was right. another way to kind of, um, kind of distract from that. Yeah, almost film school. Yeah. Right? Um, well, no, I think parts of it. No, I thought the rest of it was masterful. Um, no, no, no. I mean that in terms of the raw grittiness, dirtiness of it. Yeah. You know, that sense of... I have these constraints for budget and technology, but I don't care. I'm going to give the vision I want to give. Similar to also Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, very much. much. Uh, his, Quentin's, uh, what is it, his first film, right? Um, his first big. I think that was his first I film. I think that is his first film. Yeah, because he's only he's made nine. Like nine. Yeah. Right. Um, but, like, it was it's the same thing. It was kind of constrained by its time. Yeah. Uh, and if, like, you watch his newer stuff, and then go back to his old stuff. If you didn't see it originally, you'd be like, "This is the quality is right." Not it's and it's not his fault. It's at all. The technology had that thing. exactly. Um, but Irfan Khan, like I said, the best performance I've seen that guy give, and, he's and I've never seen him give a bad performance no, ever. But this one completely different from all of his other characters. Yes, um, and obviously Shakespeare lends itself to these amazing characters. Exactly. Um, but like the the grittiness he he gave the humor that Vashal and Irfan brought to this, especially towards the beginning, like when he was shooting and it kept it was a bunch of blanks. Yep. <laughs> and then they just started and laughing. They just laugh and leave the room. <laughs> and then they go. Poof. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. I died. Yeah, I was laughing so hard. And yep. but then the beginning part with Nasser and Shah and uh, that other gentleman, Om Puri. Uh, Om Puri. Yeah. Uh, they, I, they were playing witches, correct? Correct. Um, which was which there's brilliant. three. Yeah. 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 Let's talk about that. And we're gonna get back to Irfan and Tebu. This is gonna be a um, long one. Sorry. This is a long one. But yes, they play in Macbeth. It's the three witches. And the differences with this 
are that there's two versus three, and the witches in Macbeth don't play as involved mm -hmm. a part of the story. They're much more just on the outskirts telling prophetic and spiritual soothsaying things, mm -hmm. whereas these guys actually are connected and interacting with Macbeth in ways that it was brilliant. It was really brilliant. That's brilliant. One of the most brilliant things about Vishal. I, I mean, he has a thousand, but like the way he can. Most people when they're redoing Macbeth, they usually keep it fairly similar. They'll put it in a different time, but they'll be like, and, and I was, I was same waiting. thing with Hamlet. Yeah, and I was but just contemporize it. Yeah, and leave it that way. And I was waiting for it because I was like, you know, there's a famous line. Is this a dagger I see before me? Mm -hmm. And I was like, is he gonna put this in there? Right. And he didn't. And he didn't. And I was like, that's ballsy. And he adds <laughs> stuff to it yeah. that isn't anywhere remotely close to being in the original. Make, uh, Lady Macbeth didn't kill herself. Yes. She was married to somebody else. Yes. She gets pregnant. Yes. And all of those things added I was... so much to the storytelling. And he, I, I was, as I was watching this, I was realizing, and, and this is the place to say it, I was like, this is way above my pay grade. And here, what I mean by that is... This, this man, this creator of film, is at another level. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know... Well, understanding Shakespeare. Even. <laughs> yes. The, he's, a, he's way above us in terms of his comprehension of Shakespeare. Oh, that's a, his that's comprehension. a, that's a severe understatement. That's a, <laughs> he is... He is I, I would love to know from... I would love to talk with him about Shakespeare. Well, I would love to know from people who have, like, doctorates in... in um, there are people who have studies where they're pure focuses on Shakespearean works. Mm -hmm. I would like to know from somebody who's done that, who knows every little nuance of it and get their opinion mm -hmm. because he is so far above and we probably missed a thousand little things because he's so much more familiar with everything about Shakespeare and everything about Shakespeare's works and film. The man is just, a, if there's a word master for filmmaking, He's a master filmmaker, yeah. as good as as good as anybody I've ever seen. Yep, he um, is. He is. He's he, just a masterful. It's not just when when I tell people like, uh, like when we talk about our favorite directors or he's in that conversation. Oh, one hundred percent. And that's not just Indian directors. No, 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 no That's no. just directors. Yeah. If like, people were to rattle, if they were to say who are your favorite directors of all time, I would say this, 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 and I would include Vishal Bardwash. And I would 100%. say you, you have got to see. And we've only seen a few of his films. Yeah. But just Header and this alone. I haven't seen anybody do an adaptation of Shakespeare that is as brilliant mm -hmm. and original and dangerous and different and exacting. He's, he's extraordinary because he'll be so exact to the original texts and be completely outside the box yeah at the same time yeah it's incredible incredible and he he brings it's very similar to quentin in this way as well he brings the best out of his actors yeah it's okay let's talk about that yeah he brings like the like quentin every actor wants to he wants to work with quentin, work with quentin <laughs> because he will give you the best role of your life yes and i feel that's the exact same thing with fashal bardo both in his screenplay and then in the final product like the, the, the priyanka chopra with uh Seven Cool Moth and that yes. amazing character. And then, so of course, she's done other amazing work as well. But um, uh, Shahid Kapoor with yes. Heather and then everybody else. Like Irfan Khan and, and Tebu in that film. But I feel like both of them, even in this film, I mean, they had a much more prevalent role in this, of course. Yeah. But they both... Tabu's character was amazing for one. We could talk about... <laughs> like, well, let's talk... The two of them together, when I was watching them, there was a point when I was watching the two of them. I think it was the moment... When and this was this was this was one shot that I I'm pretty sure was specific. Mm -hmm. It's toward the end and he's holding her and she's crying and they're leaning against the mirror, mm -hmm. right? Well, first of all, from a directorial and cinema cinematography thing, what I saw was who they are now versus who they were before and all that's happened and them at that moment seeing and thinking what has happened to us and I could see as they were thinking about what has happened to us what have we done you were seeing them looking at their own reflection internally but also remembering who they used to be and he was giving us that visual with them just sitting against a mirror 
but as I'm watching the two of these people work, and it, it began for me earlier in one of their scenes together, there's really the, the height of watching beautiful acting at its finest is watching Irfan and Taboo in this film. Uh, and and Nasserda. Uh, yeah, but the two of them working together, mm -hmm. they're so natural, they're so believable, they're so honest. I just, they must, I can't imagine they just didn't love doing this work together. Mm -hmm. And the, the freedom I feel they've got that he brings, I'm sure, to the project. That freedom of knowing whatever I do here, I can trust that when it's done, I'm gonna like what I see. Mm -hmm. Cause that happens with a lot of actors where they do their best work and then a director screws it up by editing stuff in a way that you look at it and it's like, okay, not in anything I was imagining. Yep. And you, I just, if you wanna watch believable acting, just watch these two. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, incredible. Every time they as were as good as it gets. Like in this film, uh, never lagged for me either. Like, Ever. I, and it's the shortest one, which I thought was strange for, for being its first. And so many years before, it is the shortest of the trilogy. It is. And you know what's interesting about that? Yeah. It's also interestingly one of Shakespeare's shortest. Is it really? Uh huh. Oh. It's in fact, it's like a third of Hamlet. Really? Yeah. Wow. It is. It is of. Uh, it's so short that historians have thought that the final product we have maybe isn't really what he intended. It's that short. So the fact that he kept it that clipped is an homage to. I'm sure it was intentional. Of yeah. I want this thing to be. I want people to be surprised at how quick this thing flies by. And there were a bunch of people. I think we saw this guy. He did a really good job as well. Um, I and mean, we've seen him in a few oh, things. Oh, yeah. Um, um, we've seen him in a lot of things. Uh, Marsha. Th there were no weak links no. in the ensemble. 100%. And it was very godfathery, the way very. Uh, it was one shot, and also the, the story that it kind of went through. Yeah. Uh, very godfathery. Um, and you, the, the main guy even had a, a voice. Kind he, of thing. he really walked a fine line on that. Because it was very clear he was wanting to capture the essence of Vito Corleone. Because mm -hmm. he captured that without it being an impersonation. Oh, yeah. It was, but it was close. It was close. Really close to stepping over and being a Brando impersonation. Yeah. But thankfully, he kept it, he kept it right where it needed yeah. to be. Hey. And let's talk about that. Because the original play from Shakespeare is a political story. Mm -hmm. It's about political... Uh, and, and it's a contemporary story. Because Shakespeare wrote that. And it's really a a telling of a true story that he twisted about his current scenario with the current king at the time. So Vishal did the exact same thing yeah. by turning it into something contemporized and about the fight for power within the realms of uh, the mafia and politics yep. and even Bollywood and oh, yeah. how they're intertwined and in ways. that we were able to, like, they said specific directors' names. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think Kara Jora was in there from Coffee with Karan. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. He was in there. Yep. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. But like everyone in this was amazing. Nasserdin Shah captured me from his first scene. Uh, the use of them as the witches was just genius. Brilliant. Genius. And I like he was one of my favorite because him and the other guy he kept sticking out his tongue. Uh huh. And I was like, oh my <laughs> god, I love this. This they were great unit. together. Quarks they gave them. Yes. And they put them as the police. Yes. Uh, was very interesting. Uh, and the way they talked was Shakespearean, but it didn't feel Shakespeare. Like it didn't feel like they were doing like a right. Oh, like crap like that. Um, and so I thought that was genius. I thought Vishal's use of the blood, the shots, and the use of it. Yes. was genius and the madness the way they're both starting to slip mm -hmm. and he even held back some compared to what Macbeth is because Shakespeare Lady Macbeth just flat out loses it completely yeah and everybody's like she has lost her mind you know and she's trying to get the blood off of her hands and everybody's seeing her do it where he put it just Irfan sees her wanting to get the blood off the walls. He made... Which I liked it. It made it much it, more realistic. He, it, it really, really did. Because what Shakespeare did is he made her insanity much more public. Yeah. And what Vishal did was turn the insanity as just a voyage between those two people that no one else really got a hold of. Yeah. Um, and, I, and didn't really push them over the edge so far that... Shakespeare did and I thought it was great. I also loved it was really simple 
But at the end when Irfan goes by, and you're pretty sure this is how it's gonna end, and he gets shot, he gives you the POV of Irfan. Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. Wasn't it? And I was, I was wondering how he was gonna end it, because he ended Heather, and Hamlet didn't die. Right. And so I was like, is, is Hamlet gonna, I mean, is yeah, Macbeth I, gonna live? Exactly. And, and so I was, I was happy with the way it ended, uh, but uh, I was also was like, he, because I was almost hoping that he was gonna change it, but he already changed so much. Yes. Like Lady Macbeth. Right. Like, kill herself. Right. He, I mean, Macbeth actually killed her, really. Yeah, that's it's like, true. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. He, he took her from the hospital, and then also they gave the baby away to just anybody who came to see it. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, I, I thought was like strange. It was a little strange. You, oh, here's a baby. You can have it, I guess. Uh. But I also <laughs> loved, I also loved, we talked about this a second ago, I loved how he brought into it the tension and the challenge and the basic middle of the storyline of the fact that she was actually married to the head of the mafia and he was in love with her and they were having an affair and then when she I love that line man I didn't see it coming I don't know if you did when Irfan says she says that she's gonna have they're gonna have a baby and she's three months and he says when was the last time you were mm -hmm. intimate and you realize oh no and I thought brilliant because that's not in Shakespeare's version at all do you think it was hers or do you think it was his um I mean, do you think it was McBull Macbeth, or do you think it was... I don't think it was Macbeth. Yeah, do I? Yeah. And I think it came out when she said, we killed his father. Yes, and that's when he gets angry. Yeah. Which I can't stand, man. The two times he slapped her, it's really, really hard for me to stomach that. Yeah. I hate seeing a man slap a woman. Well, it was brilliant. It was, and I hate it. Yeah. Uh, it just makes me sick to my stomach. But in the realm of the two we've seen that are from the Shakespeare trilogy, do you have... Do you have are they equal for you? Do you have a preference between Heather and McBool? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, I could probably watch Heather more because of how the, the shots are just... It's flawless. Yeah, it, it didn't have those constraints of and not having the technology where it needs to be. And I love the dirtiness of McBool. Yeah. I, Header to me is just, if this is McBool and this is Header, Header to me is just I don't a, know little, that, a, a rung above I think that's, for me. I think that's the only thing though, because I, I, even parts in this that I could say like the whole cast might even be better than what there was in Header. Like maybe. I could even maybe. say like as a whole, the cast in this was incredible. Yeah, and I just, I, I also admit... And, and I'm not saying anything bad about the cast and header. Oh, no, no, they no. were, uh, you no. know how we love that film. Yeah, for me, for me, and, and I it's agree. It's such a difficult question. I, the only thing I could say that I would definitively say is that since it's newer and you have the quality of the video quality, it's easier for me to watch. Yeah. But it didn't, just like if you watch The Godfather, it's like, I can't hold that against it. No, I agree. I just, as a whole... Header, and I agree, I have a bias toward it because Hamlet is my favorite work of not just Shakespeare, of all theater, of all time. Mm -hmm. And for him to have done what he did with something that is so important to me and important to the world of theater, and remember I told you, I was watching it at one point going, don't screw this up because what you're doing is perfection. I didn't, this was dirty. I don't consider this to be a film that is perfect, but I love that it's imperfect, right? Because Header was so perfect, it, it for me is a just a notch above in terms of. But the only the two. imperfection I could find in between the two is the video quality. That's the only, and that's not Vishal's fault. No, I agree. And for me, it's probably just a matter of aesthetic, and my bias I, toward I, Hamlet. I loved the dirtiness of this. I, I did too. I Hundred percent loved it. I did too. I couldn't get enough of it, um, and I was watching it like. <laughs> I, I couldn't get enough of it. And, and I'm it sure... It could have gone on even longer, uh, and I would have been completely happy with it. Um, because I just... I, watching his him and coming up with his creative shots is just... Well, like, it's it's art. You're, you're, it's, you're, you're watching, watching art. You're watching live art yep. in front of you. Um, and it's just so brilliant. Because um, some of the shots, like, after they had sex, um, and they kind of... It, it was through uh, a... What is the thing? A sheer... Uh, yeah, the lace thing around, hanging around the bed. Yeah. When he's praying and she's in bed. Yeah. yeah. And there was two shots before that and then after they had sex and they were kind of switched after that. Um, but then also when 
she's cleaning the wall and they do another mirror shot mm -hmm. of you can see him on the bed and yes. her cleaning the wall yes through the mirror yes um it's such a brilliant shot and then the opening shot when there it's really just shadows that you could see mm -hmm. and this is Sarah and Shaw and um Omi Om Pori um talking to this guy mm -hmm. um and so and also his writing and of course the score we haven't talked about the score yet um it it's brilliant such a brilliant the, brilliant i don't know how this guy has so much talent in one body right but the fact that he can direct as brilliant as he does and write mm -hmm. but then also he does the score for the entire film and does it brilliant brilliant i don't i don't was he a was he a um composer first or was he a director first don't know I don't know, but he's clearly a renaissance man who has the capabilities of being a complete filmmaker with, uh, he's just, uh, he's, he's in the same league as the legends of film that we know in America. He is up there with Francis Ford Coppola and Martin Scorsese and Quentin Tarantino and Steven Spielberg yeah. and all of the people who have mastered the art form and have a capacity to not just master the art form, but take it to other places that no one else can. Yeah, he's that he's that level, and I I can't wait to see Unkara because I'm sure it will be what all the stupid babies have told us that is it is this trilogy that he put together that all go together because right now I put this and Header together mm -hmm. and I would say you've got to watch both of these pieces I, to watch this man's mastery of Shakespearean works. When we watch Unkara, I mean, it might have been smart of us to watch it in the reverse order, right? So you wouldn't have that aspect that we've seen his work in Header with the video quality. And yeah, but it doesn't bother you. Go I know it doesn't bother you either. Um, but I think that's how I would recommend it, though. I'd recommend him to watch McBool first. I, I would, too. I would say, and watch McBool and probably end it with Header. I would, we'll see what happens. We see. Yeah, that's, that's probably what I would do. Maybe that's why he did it this way, because he did it in years apart. Maybe he, mm -hmm. the one that was closest to his heart was Header. Ham was Hamlet. 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 I would and imagine it is, because if he, he wants to get everything so Yeah, right. if he loves Shakespeare as much as he clearly does, my guess is I would just he was love, like, I would okay, love, it's going to build to Hamlet. I would love to talk to him. Just about, it, it doesn't even have to be about anything no. about Shakespeare, but like, even more so. Yeah. Work with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the foregone. That's a little given. Yeah. But, uh, no, I it just, <laughs> let's, let's, we'd like to, admit, uh, sir, we'd like to do a film with you. Once again, where, where we can, where we can work with you for at least 30 days, just like a, a full month of work with you on a film. I'll be your PA for and free. And then, and then in between, <laughs> in between shooting days, we'll just go eat dinner and talk about film and theater yeah. for that whole month. Oh, that would be amazing. Thank you. We but, appreciate you doing that. For like us. I said, I will be your PA. <laughs> like, that's how. For any great director, I would be their PA for of course. Free. Just well, to watch free. them work. Just uh, I would, yeah, I would just like to sit on set and watch him work. Mm -hmm. Just watch him visualize. Watch how he communicates with his actors. I would also love to watch just to watch Irfan or Taboo. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, just watch them. And, and you know what else? I as I was watching this, I want to see this even more than because header doesn't work with what I'm about to say. This could be put on stage in its current form. Mm -hmm. You could do this on stage. You'd have to make a few little adjustments, but you could take this script and you could turn this into a play. Could you imagine if we got to see this and, and Irfan and Taboo reprise these roles and it was on stage? I would lose my freaking mind. I would love it if you would do a film. You can even do it with the same actors just in, in, in Hollywood. Just redo it in, in English. Yeah, so people would watch it because sadly Americans are idiots. Yeah, and they don't watch stuff with subtitles. Yeah, you couldn't do that with Header because it's too intertwined with with the Indian experience yeah. in Kashmir and Pakistan and yeah. and even this too because he really goes into the underbelly of stuff with like in Sacred Games. I know? just want people to know about him. And I know and these actors and this, I know like this story. I'm surprised. I maybe people have asked to buy the property like the the rights so they could redo it, but right. I'm sure he's like, no, I'm gonna have to. Have my hands on that, of course. Of course, <laughs> it's my, it's my is, baby. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, but oh, man, I'm just that's the selfish in me trying to. I'm it is. Yeah. The, no, you know, just the we more stupid babies in America. That's what we need. Yeah. And spread the word about all this beautiful content. Obviously, a plus 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 a plus plus off the board. Plus 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 plus. Beautiful work. Master a masterpiece, just like Header in a different way. And I'm so glad it lived up to it. 
Me too. I had so, so. high expectations going in. So did I. Yep. I was I was afraid. I was like, I really hope this doesn't let us down. Because we'd be honest. Yeah. We we'd tell you we think it's a donkey. I'm so glad, and so I'm very excited to watch Om. However you pronounce it. Omkara. Omkara. Yeah. Because that's. Oh! <laughs>